What's happening? Will Freeman, RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com, talking to you today about building your tribe, okay? By tribe, I mean your people, your group of guys, maybe some girls in there that you are going to move through life with, okay? For, for many people, the old ways, you know, the, the ways of the past, the ways of tradition were God, country, family, okay? And a lot of that has been lost in our anonymous, atomized, modern society. Um, half half the people in the country don't have any type of faith, which is I'm not I'm not knocking that. Um, the country no longer provides, in my opinion, at least in the West, the social contract that one should expect from a country. A country, you know, you've got half the population in complete. Um, and antagonism with each other. You've got so many groups of different tribes fighting with each other, identitarian politics. Uh, it, it, you know, the West are countries that are divided. You've got high taxes. You've got, you know, it's very difficult to become an entrepreneur with taxes and inflation and, and all these different things working against you. As far as family goes, you're looking at a, a 50% divorce rate. Families have been ripped apart. Um, it, children have been traumatized growing up under divorce. You know, we are living in, in, in a totally different reality than, than we've lived as humans over the last 10,000 years in, in these agricultural societies that we've built up. And it truly is a time of change. And there are some positive things that we're able to come out of, um, you know, these cultural revolutions that we've been going through. But there's really been in my opinion, a lot of loss, okay? There's been a lot of loss, and there's a lot of guys feeling like they're alone out there, uh, especially for guys who are charting their own path. Maybe you're reading stuff like uh, my material, and you have different ideas that are outside of the reality tunnel, the common reality tunnel. You want to build a different kind of life. You want more freedom. A lot of the time, it you end up feeling isolated. You can end up feeling alone. I, I live here in Thailand, I see a lot of guys come out here and a lot of guys are, are alone. I see a lot of guys that don't look happy. I see a lot of guys that don't make it out here. Um, and, you know, I want to give you a different, newer reality. For those of you who are coming out of that reality tunnel that, that you've been brought up in and you've seen, you know, how the, you know, the country isn't functioning the way you want it. Your family isn't functioning the way you want it. You know, you don't have that tribal. I want to give you a new paradigm for, for you to be able to use. Okay. So I'm recreating all those things. I realized, you know, a while back that, that I'm going to have to re recreate those older realities, but in the way that I want them to be. So for me, it's God, then myself, which is my wealth, health, relationships, lifestyle, and my mission. Okay. Which is RLD. Then it's my tribe, which is my, my family and my guys. And then it's my community, which is you guys, as well as you know, people that I interact with in, in my daily life where, you know, I'll shop local as opposed to, you know, going to the major store if, if I like the person that's running that shop, that type of thing. So just you guys and enhancing sort of the, the narrow community around where I live. And when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to think what I have to do. Okay. I'm doing, I'm saying my prayers. I'm taking care of my health, wealth, relationships, lifestyle. I'm doing stuff for my tribe and I'm doing stuff for, for you guys. And that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It's that simple. I'm not trying to change the world. And if I do affect some change, it's going to be through changing you individually. Okay. And I've taken responsibility for all those things. That's the important part. I, I take it on as my obligation for myself to succeed, my family, my tribe, and you guys as much as I possibly can. I am waking up to be in service to those things and taking it on as a responsibility and an obligation and having that responsibility and obligation makes you that much more invested and gives you that much more of a sense of purpose. Okay. Too much independence and too much freedom is overrated. I'll tell you that right now, too much freedom, too much independence. You feel lost. You need to have a sense of obligation. You need to be able to wake up with a mission. You need to have a certain amount of tasks that you have to do, or you don't feel like you're accomplishing things and you don't feel like you're a man. All right. Taking responsibility, taking an obligation for those things and having a tribe is, is awesome. 
okay? Especially when it's like-minded guys, all right? So I've had a lot of requests for this, and I'm gonna tell you how to first define your tribe, okay? So number one, they know your name. So that rules out all politicians, movement leaders, and anyone trying to sell you that identity politics where we have to all get together to change this thing, except I'm leading it and you're following and you're giving me money and attention and clickbait, all right? So that those guys aren't part of my tribe. Um, politicians aren't part of my tribe. Uh, business and banking leaders aren't part of my tribe. Anyone who doesn't know my name, I saw on the last election cycle, people are fighting and dying in the streets for politicians who are billionaires who don't know their names, okay? That is not your tribe, dude. I'm telling you that right now. The first thing that has to be part of your tribe is they have to know your name. They have to have met you in person, okay? Number two, they like you. Rules out people who don't want to be in your tribe. Number three, they're honest, loyal, and dependable. That's going to rule out 90% of people you know. Real talk. They're accountable. They do what they say. They show up on time. They are reliable. They they actually follow through on the plans and what they said they were going to do. They'd help you move at the last minute, okay? There, there goes 99% of your Facebook friends, of your so-called Facebook friends, okay? Who would help you move at the last minute? 99 of your so-called face 99% of your so-called Facebook friends would say, "Ooh, sorry, you know, I I wish I could, but excuse and I don't really care about you that much." All right? That's that's the reality of it. Okay. They're winners. Okay. You are the five people you surround yourself with. If you sur surround yourself with low consciousness, negative guys who aren't trying to achieve things in life, that's the kind of vibration that you're going to attract. That's the kind of person that you're, you're going to be. You want to sur surround yourself with the best people possible. Okay. So this should leave you with about zero to five people. I think five, maybe 10 at the tops. So that's your tribe. And that's how you define them. All right. How to build your tribe. How to build your tribe. Okay. First, become valuable. Whether that's money, connections, intelligence, charm, kindness, support. Maybe you have a platform. I have a platform that can be useful to my guys or for, for bringing guys into uh, my tribe. Um, number two, put yourself around like-minded winners. That has been a lot easier here in Asia. It's not great in Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai is not a great place to meet people, but it is better than the West because most of the, the guys that I'll meet out here will be independent, will be entrepreneurs, will sort of have pulled themselves out of that common reality tunnel. I'll have more in common with them. A uh, better place would be Bangkok or uh, Kuala Lumpur or uh, Ho Chi Minh, which I will be in uh, within the next year. They... Uh, and number three, make, make sure that they're fit. Okay. Make sure that they have the same mindset you do and, and that they want to be part of the tribe. Okay. When you build up your tribe, you're going to want to have some tribal rules, whether they're written out or, or whether they're, they're just, um, sort of, you know, going without said, uh, the first tribal rule, if you can, is get people paid. Okay. The best way to get people to do what you want is get them paid. Matt does my graphic design, you know, he, he gives me a great rate and it's not a ton of money, but it's going to be more money in the future. I'm going to want to do marketing with a couple of my other guys. And when I buy a condo, I'm going to get my man Ryan to, to, uh, you know, sell that to me. I, I want to give as much money to my friends as possible. I, in fact, I want to be able to give all my money to my friends. I want to be able to get to, to, to do all the work that I need for my business and the stuff buying things in my life, major ticket purchases. I want to be getting that from my friends and the guys in my tribe. So get people paid. People love you when you get them paid. Number two, give give tremendous value. Give as much value as you can to your friends, whether that's support, you know, brotherly love, you know, on and on and on. Um, number three, brotherly love. Uh, you know, most male friendships are pretty terrible. It's guys shitting on each other and competing instead of cooperating and competing with the outside world. Okay. So you want to, you know, even if, if you're uncomfortable expressing that, at least show it, show that you care about your friends, show that you support them, show that you throw stones at their enemies. Um, you know, all those things. Okay. Number four, try and mitigate things that, that they might resent about you. Okay. And, for me, what I try and mitigate, and I try and do this across all my life, is um, bragging, being critical, interrupting, 
uh, being negative, all those things that might make someone resent you, I, I make sure to try and watch around the people that I care about because I want to have the best relationships possible. Okay. Next point is don't flirt or have sex with any of their women past, present, or future. This is a big one. This is one where a lot of guys make mistakes. Okay. I don't, if you're, if you're my boy, I don't care if you had just a casual sex with a girl three years ago, right? I'm not going after her. Why? And I'm not even going to ask you if I can, right? Why? Because I'm putting you up here, right? And I'm putting just a casual sex. That's that's like the low end of my my priority. I'm not even going to ask if I can hook up with that girl because there's an abundance of women. And I see some guys, some younger guys, where they're playing the game of like trying to hook up with each other's girls. And they're like, ah, he doesn't care. He didn't care about that girl. He might not care about that girl, but he'll care that she hooked up with you. Okay, because your tribe is competitive, you're doing things that make other people's end you. Maybe you're taller, or you make more money, or you know, this, that, and the other thing. Or, or when you guys go out, the two of you, the other guy gets more attention, and now he's gone and hooked up with a girl. Or maybe you did like that girl, but you, you, you just weren't telling him. All right, I'm telling you, that is an easy way to make your tribe fall apart. So I, I look at it as like a that's one of the bonuses for hanging out with me. Like you don't have to worry about any of your girls. If I know that you even hooked up with her or even if you like her, man, I'm not even asking. I'm not even asking for permission. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not even touching that. Right. Again, it goes back to like, don't do things that, that, that people might resent. And that's, that's a big, big area. Um, and, and I look at it kind of like a bonus. It's like, you know, it's an extra nicety. Like you, you buy a round for a beer for the guys, you know, it shows that that you go the extra mile, like you don't touch anyone's girl, it just shows like, I put you that much higher. Like even if, even if he's bored with the girl, even if he finished with her three years ago, okay? That's a really important thing. And, and lastly is build them up. Like so many people don't do this. They just, cause they don't believe in themselves and their own potential. So, so they don't believe in their friend's potential. Like a guy's telling me about a business idea, I'm like that's awesome, you could do this, this, that, and the other, okay? If you look at my video on how to be charming, it's like agree and amplify. Agree and amplify what he's saying, like believe in him. You know, some guys, I believe in them more than they believe in themselves. Because I see the potential in myself, I'm a positive thinker, I'm thinking about good things that's gonna happen, so I build them up. Some guys have never even had a friendship like that. You know, because they're so used to like, com competition, antagonism, guys trying to put each other down. All that low consciousness, low quality friendships that a lot of guys grow up with. So when you start building people up and showing them brotherly love and adding value, it's like people are going to want to be around you, man. And vice versa when you get that back from your friends, you know. So that's all very important. And lastly, I'm just going to talk about the tribal goals. You can have different goals, but here, here are the goals for, for me and what I want to do with my guys. I think we have six or seven, you know, guys now. And first is a group office. Okay, that's for state. Um, we're deciding on where the location's going to be. I want to, you know, crush it here. Just, just stay in my apartment. Just keep getting these videos out for maybe the next six months or the next year. But eventually, we're going to move to a group office. Um, working by your by yourself is kind of a state killer, but being around like high energy dudes, really good for your state. Um, you know, I I hated working in sales, but I loved working around my sales buddies because we were joking and the energy was high and all that stuff. So group office for state is really good. Um, when you're working around guys, it's, next point is cooperation, okay? I can compete in the world. Like I'm trying to compete in personal development. That's a huge industry, it's very competitive. I can compete way more effectively with five or six really smart guys on my team giving me ideas and vice versa where I can give them ideas um, in their business, okay? Like every time I hang out with my guys and we talk about business, I learn something every single time, okay? Because Every guy has a different skill. Some guys know marketing or advertising or design, this, that, and the other. So I'm always able to learn and it's so much more effective for me to compete with the outside world through cooperation with, with my tribe. Uh, number three is services, okay? Again, as I said, I wanna give all my future um, you know, services through RLD to, to my guys. You know, The marketing I'm gonna do, the advertising, the design, the web mastering. Uh, I don't want some random dude just poking around my YouTube channel or my, my website 
or my email list, okay? I want someone that I trust that's sitting right next to me that I know exactly what they're doing, okay? Like I said um, in, in my video on why you should do business with your friends, because you're otherwise you're doing business with strangers or enemies, right? I want to, I want that guy checked out before, you know, I, I let someone get involved in, in, in the deeper levels of my business, not some $3 an hour uh, VA from the Philippines, okay? You want the best and ideally, again, that only helps to strengthen the bonds because you're giving people money and everyone loves when you give them money. That's a fact. And vice versa, like if they have, you know, if I can, I can be useful to, to their business as well or maybe for coaching, you know, something along those lines, sharing services is really important. Number four is, is potential partnerships, okay? I set up um, two of my guys who are, who are doing Airbnb management now, okay? And they're, and they're stepping their game up on there. Um, you know, a couple of guys might start a marketing company. You know, just being around high-profile, smart, independent entrepreneurs, you can partner up on different businesses. I, might, I have a few ideas of my own that I, I want to partner with a couple of guys. And again, it comes down to you... you in my opinion, if you're going to partner with someone, you have to partner with a friend, okay? Because otherwise you're partnering with a, a, a stranger or, or an enemy or you're watching a stranger potentially turn into an enemy. You, you want to have someone really checked out because business partnerships can go sideways very quickly. And that also gives you like an arbitration community. If you have six or seven guys in a room, two guys aren't getting along in the business, you can sort of sit down um, and bring everyone, everyone together. Lastly, and this is still in development, is a group mission. So everyone has their personal missions, but I mean, it'd be really fun to co-create a group mission. There's a couple things I have in the work, the works. Um, you'll you'll probably see them in the next two or three years, but that's still in development. But you know, what could you change in your reality? What what could you guys do together? What you know, what cool things could you do with the world if if you really put five or six or seven or ten super smart guys together working on? Um, it just adds an extra game in your life and a game for, for your people. And, um, as I keep telling you guys, like I look at life as a game and I look at myself as a player in the game. And if I can co-create, you know, with my friends, like a video game, when you've got three or four guys on split screen, it's a lot easier to beat the game when you're able to co-create and, and have a group mission as well. And that's it. So let me know what you think about this. Um, let me know about your own experiences with building a tribe and thank you so much for watching and listening.